Matthew chapter 10 verse 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endure to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. I want to say all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth, risking their lives and freedoms to do so. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom. I decided to do a quick video today on something that, uh, in reference to an issue that I dealt with very, very early this morning. Um, and it kind of, it didn't, it, it did bother me a little bit today. Um, um, I had, uh, uh, plans to go out into my town very nearby and street teach the day for the day is the Sabbath and, uh, the new moon has come in as of yesterday evening. And, um, I'm not going to say that. This situation that happened early this morning was a hindrance to me teaching, but um, I definitely didn't want to put myself in a in a predicament that could cause something to, uh, so cause something to happen or for me to flee into another city. So um, I, I when I came home this evening, um, when I came home this after, early this morning. Uh, right before noon, um, the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Hashem, and Kakadash had brought, delivered this scripture to me by way of the Holy Spirit. And I began to do research on it. And I said, you know, uh, one of the better things for me to do right now today is to do a lesson on this because I know somewhere down the line someone else may be dealing with a situation like this. But even, uh, even on a greater scale, we will all be dealing with this soon and very soon, for the Bible speaks of it prophetically. So, um, again, as you can see here, we, uh, we start out with Matthew 10, 23, and it says, But when they persecute you, 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 when they persecute you in the city, flee into another, for verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. So, um, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to, uh, first I, 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 I will give you a small rendition of, of what happened with me this morning. Um, I know it was a Sabbath. Um, I was listening to some videos, um, in my feed, um, as I slept this morning. Um, from time to time, I do know that, um, gross darkness has come upon the earth. So sometimes when I sleep, I will sleep and I will usually pull up one of the Apostles channels, um, either Apostle Ramlob or Apostle, um, Elder Apostle Gabar or Elder Apostle Tahar, and I will put my computer to play their videos continuously. And I will lay down and I will sleep and it is at that time that the Holy Spirit deals with me by way of dreams. And also there's a there's a the peace that comes over me pursuant to the fruit of the Holy Spirit that I is operating uh, in the men of the Lord Powell, uh, pursuant to Galatians 5.22. Um, and, and I have a peace in my room and I can sleep peacefully. And again, um, many dreams come my way like this. So um, I had received a call Early this morning, from a young lady that was getting off work that could not um, that could not find a ride home, and um, I was up. Like I said, I was getting ready to start to pull together some information to do a video this morning, and um, before I head out for street teaching. And the individual, when I came to pick her up, 
Um, she had been having some issues with her boyfriend in the past, her ex. Uh, well, I, I, I can't, I don't know what their relationship is, um, whatnot, but without going into too many details, they had been having some issues and problems. And so, um, and so he proceeded to the car and he, he, uh, opened the door and took her phone. And so, um, she had contacted law enforcement in town and, um, from that point in time, the individual, um, when law enforcement had went up to him to retrieve her phone, um, uh, he had made a threat to her, and he had kind of made a threat toward me, uh, whatnot. So I had said to myself, I said, you know, I want a street teaching town. I'm not afraid of him, but I'm not, I don't want to be in a position to so discord, you know, and, 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 and the Bible says the meat shall inherit the earth, and it is not in my character to come out of my character like that, you know, because y'all, Yahweh Bashim Shai has, has had, or has ordered my steps, and he has taught me that we, we don't, we don't get into that like that, so, um, you know, and whatnot, and it was a Sabbath, so I definitely didn't, 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 I wasn't feeling that, basically, you know, anything like that, and I know him very well, but I know he's been, he's been, he's been causing a lot of issues on himself lately and a lot of things been backfiring in his face and uh you know I'm aware of that too so you know I didn't want to put any gasoline on his fire <laughs> or what to say so anyway without further ado um as I said here today and as I got up and as I wanted to go in street teach I said you know Yahweh Shem Yavashai brought Matthew 10 23 to me and says, you know, when you're persecuting into one city, flee into another. So that is the backdrop of the story as to why I'm making the video. And right now, we're just going to grab a few scriptures because, like I say, soon and very soon, we will all be dealing with this, whether locally or by the enemy. That is, um, Esau, Edom, coming down. The enemy has come down upon you having great wrath, but he knows he has it but a short time. So anyway, getting right to it. Let's jump right into it. Um, the very first precept that I want to bring about to Matthew ten twenty three is um, first thing for the very first thing. Let, what I want to do is I want to study that scripture. We want to see what the word persecute means, and then we're going to grab it in Google, and we'll go from there. Okay, that word comes from the Greek, and here, and let's hear it. Strong's G, 1377. Dioka. Dioka. Okay, and that word uh, means to pursue by implication, to persecute, ensue, follow after, given to, persecute, press forward. Okay, to make, to run. To make, to run, or flee, put to flight, drive away, to run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing, to run after, to press on. Hold on for a second, hold on a second. Slocky, slocky, excuse me for the interruption. Yeah, sorry about that interruption, slocky. What now? But getting back to it, okay. It says to to run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing, to run after, to press on figuratively, of one who it who slack it, to press on figuratively of one who in a race runs swiftly to reach the goal, to pursue in a hostile manner, in any way, whatever to harass, trouble, molest one. To persecute, to be mistreated, suffer persecution on the on account of something, without the idea of hostility, to run after, follow after someone, to pursue, to seek after, eagerly, earnestly endeavor to acquire. So we definitely can see there um, the way I felt this morning. Um, at times when he has been this way in the past, before I came to knowledge of the truth. He'll usually die down when he doesn't got what he want, okay, so to speak. I think we all know people like this. Um, and to be more, um, when I came, when I got here this morning, 
uh, one of the first things that came to my mind was to research the Jezebel spirit. Because that is a spirit that I almost knew immediately I had uh, looked up before or read about before. And uh, there's a lot of control there, a lot of manipulation on the on the individual's part in reference to the girl. And, um, you know, so I knew what I was dealing with, okay? But uh, anyway, <clears throat> now, so as you can see there... Um, the third bulletin, in any way, whatever, to harass trouble, okay, um, to persecute, okay, so now, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to come out of the blue, I would like to go to Google and see what Google says about uh, the word persecute, and I definitely saw some words there that definitely uh, let me know that this had qualified, you know, for the definition, so again, let's, let's hear the word. Persecute. Okay, and it says, subject, we meaning someone, to ho to subject someone to hostility and ill treatment, especially because of their race or political or religious beliefs. Um, and so uh, we have some synonyms here to oppress, abuse, victimize, ill treat, mistreat, maltreat, punish, tyrannize, afflict, torment, torture, martyr. Um, second definition, to harass or annoy someone persistently. Okay, similar words, harass, hound, plague, badger, harry, bait, intimidate, pick on, trouble, molest, tease, pester, bother, worry, annoy, bedevil, bully, victimize, terrorize, devil, hassle, to give someone a hard time. So well, as you can see here, these words, there are a few words that I see that really, um, that I dealt with this morning. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and law enforcement, like I say, was present. And, but law enforcement knew him and knew his history and knew, you know, that, you know, he had served some time for some other charges in the past. And, and, um, he likes to play the victim, basically, but he is always the perpetrator. You know, but anyway, get getting right along. I don't like I said. I don't want to take. I don't want to slander the man or whatnot because I don't know all that he's dealing with or whatnot. But anyway, um, so let's grab a few scriptures and let's carry on because again, I'm sure many of us have dealt with a person like this, and um, we definitely going to be dealing with it uh, pretty soon here on a massive worldwide scale. So again, let's grab a few scriptures. The first scripture I want to bring up. Uh, to the forefront is John 7 and 7 and uh, let's get that scripture right quick John 7 and 7 okay John 7 and 7 okay because the word teaches us how to deal with everything that we uh, that we're going to encounter here in these last days and one of the better things we can do is Keep the law, statutes, commandments, and ordinances of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh That way, we will always be parallel to the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh So, um, it is definitely, and we must first understand what we're dealing with and understand that these things have already been spoken. So, they are sure to happen. John 7 and 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. You see what I'm saying? So we know that gross darkness is coming upon the earth in the last days. And the Bible says in the last days, the wax of the love of many shall wax cold. So we definitely are already prepared for what we are going to encounter. Okay, now, let's also check out, let's also look at John 15 and 18. And John 15 and 18 says, if the world hated Slocky, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Yeah, so, and why is that? Uh, let's go on to 19. If you, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye, the remnant, the children of Israel, those of us who have come to repentance, those of us who obey the law, statutes, commandments, and honors of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh to the best of our ability, seeing as how we in captivity, but because ye are not of this of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Okay? Therefore the world hated you. Alright, now let's also grab um 
Another precept comes to mind right now. That's John 3.19. And John 3.19 says, Men love the darkness rather than light. Okay. Because their deeds are evil. Let's see here now. Let's pull this precept up. Let's lock here. Uh, okay. And, and it reads, And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in the Most High. Another precept that uh, I had read over the other night is coming to me right now as I read John 3.19, and that's Proverbs 8.13. Let's get it. The fear of the Lord power is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. That's the fear of the Lord. We know that the fear of the Lord pursuant to Sirach 2 and 1, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you have the fear of the Lord present in us, then we will or we will read and study to the reading started to show thyself approved unto Yahweh by Shemuel of Sharper, so in the second two, the two, second two, t- like the second, second Timothy 2.15, and then we will begin to conform our ways, thoughts, practices, operations to the word of Yahweh by Shemuel of Sharper. Romans 12 and 2, let's get it, tells us to do not be conformed to this world. Let's get it right quick. All right. Romans 12 and 2 tells us to do what? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what Salaki? Let's start again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of your heart by Shemuel Rishah. Excellent. So now, so uh, definitely, we definitely want to uh, uh, not think like the world, think, operate the way that the world operates. Right now, the world is full of arrogance, it's full of pride, people do what they want to do, people uh, uh, have no sense of direction, no sense of right or wrong, you know, and, and we have that in the knowledge of the truth. We come to the knowledge of the truth, we read and study, we, um, the Bible says that um, the whole duty of man is to keep the Lord's commandments. And to do the will of the Most High God of Israel, right? Let's get that right quick. Let's see here. Now, hmm. Uh, give me, just give me a second. Hold on a second. That scripture is going to just escape me. Um, uh, whole duty of man. Whole duty of man. Whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the whole, Salaki, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let's break that down further. Fear the Most High. Sirach 2 and 1. Let's get it right quick. And I think also in the book of Proverbs. Let's get those two precepts. First uh, Thessalonians 5, 21 says, Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. So I like to prove all things. Let's go to the book of Sirach, coming from the Apocrypha. Sirach 2 and 1. <clears throat> okay, alright. Uh, uh, this one here says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Definitely for sure. Not the precept we're looking for. Let's see if we can find that precept. That's in uh, Proverbs. Um, hold on. Let's just type it in. Um, that ain't coming up. Not right there. <laughs> no so Rico. Okay. All right. Let's get it. Uh, there it is. 
uh, Sirach 25 and 12 says, uh, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. That's right. Now, let's look, let's look around a little bit more here. Uh, Old Testament. I think it's in Proverbs 17 or 18. Um, Y'all bear with me for just one minute. There it is. Proverbs 9 and 10. Let's pull it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. We all know the word means holy means set apart. Hallowed. Consecrated unto Yahweh Shemel Right? Specific to Yahweh Shemel Now. Let's grab a few other scriptures and we're going to close this lesson. Um, the lesson will be at its end. Um, first and foremost, now, uh, one of the first precepts we're going to go back into right now, that always happens, <laughs> is um, <clears throat> let's go to Matthew 2, verse 13. Right now, I need to, I would like to bench back into the Old Testament and back into, lock back to the New Testament. And we're going to uh, see some some examples of where um, where uh, 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 where fleeing into another city was deemed acceptable, okay, and it deemed the the right thing to do according to scripture, okay. Now, <clears throat> Matthew chapter two, verse thirteen, and this story here comes from um, to us speaking of Herod, okay. Now, um, and here it is right here. We have the flight to Egypt, so let's just say this. And we all know that um, we, right now we live in Babylon the Great, which is America. And of course, pursuant to uh, Revelation 11, 8, this place is spiritually called spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt. So we are definitely on point, aren't we? Now, Matthew 2.13 says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child, which is the young Yahweh Hamashiach, and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek to slack it, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So, as you can see right then and there, anytime you're in a predicament where you feel that uh, not feel, but you believe by by either something that you've gotten yourself into because of something that you didn't understand or something you didn't do right. You go to your Yahweh Shemuel Bashar, see what the word says about it, and it is okay to flee into another city. Why? Because you are there. You fleeing into another city allows you the opportunity opportunity to continue the work of your Yahweh Shemuel Bashar. If the Yah, if the Lord has has brought you into this ministry and He's He's, he's awakening you to the knowledge of the truth, pursuant to the scriptures, and, the, and by way of the straight gate, then your job as a man of the Lord is to be teaching, is to be reproving, rebuking, correcting at every turn, uh, making videos, street teaching, pursuant to Matthew 22, 9, pursuant to Luke 14, 21, pursuant to Luke 14, 23, uh, teaching, teaching, by the, teaching on the highways and the hedges, compelling the poor into the house. Also, prophesying against myself, so the Ezekiel 35 and 2. These are things that you should be doing. So if you encounter some resistance in the town that you are in, according to the scripture, flee into another city. The town where I normally street teach at locally is about six miles from me. But there are other towns. Um, there's a town six miles past that. And it's where usually where I do all my shopping at, my grocery shopping mostly. Um, what not. So, and then there's another town that I went to school in, but it's about 10 miles in another direction. And so, um, I definitely can street teach there because I, I, the, the, the problems I encountered this morning, my chances of encountering those problems with those individuals are very, 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 very slim. You know, that's really out of their jurisdiction and, you know, of operation, so to speak. Their livelihood is just not there. Okay, now. Our next precept that we want to pull uh, is John 5 and 9. Let's check our time. Okay. John 5 and 9. John chapter 5, verse 9. We want to go to the 16th verse. 
and do a little bit of reading. Uh, John 5 and 9, and immediately the man was made, oh, uh, let's go back up. I don't like to start like that. Um, okay. Uh, let's start at 5, verse 5. And a certain man was there. Uh, actually, I don't want to start that like that. Okay, this is the healing at Bethesda. Let's go on to, um, let's see. Um, I tell you what, right now, I don't want to start hanging off a cliff, but, uh, seems like no matter where I go, I'm going to be hanging off a cliff. So let's start at John chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yahweh went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind halt, whither, waiting for the moving of the water. <laughs> for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had, beautiful. And a man, certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Verse 6, when they saw him, Slaki, when Yahweh saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Verse 7, the impotent man answered him, answer him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Verse 8, Yahweh said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Okay. Now verse 10, the Jews therefore said unto him that he, that, that Slachia, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is a Sabbath day. It is not unlawful for thee to carry thy bed. Why? Because carry, the word carry means to do some work. And you know, in the Bible, uh, according according to the uh, the knowledge of the truth, we are to not do any serve our work on the Sabbath day. Okay, verse eleven. He answered them, He that made he that made me whole, the same unto me. Take up thy bed and walk. Okay, verse twelve. Then asked they him, What man is this, Slocky? What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? Verse thirteen. And he that was healed was not. Who it was, for Yahweh Shai had conveyed him had conveyed himself away and mocked and Slaki. Let's start again, verse thirteen. And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Yahweh Shai had, had conveyed himself away, and multitude being in that place, verse fourteen. After what Yahweh Shai found it in him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Send no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Verse fifteen. The man departed and told. And told the Jews that it was Yahweh Shah, which had made him whole. Verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahweh Shah and sought to slay him. Wow. Look at that again. And therefore the Jews persecute Yahweh Shah, his own people now. And sought to, sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. My question is, what better way? Yeah, the Sabbath is a day of rest. But also the Sabbath, Exodus 28 says, keep my Sabbaths and keep them holy. Holy means set apart, consecrated, hallowed. What better way to praise the work of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh and praise the work of the Most Yahweh by, not, by, by being within the conference of praising what he had done for him. You see what I'm saying? We know, we know from the knowledge of the truth that Yahweh Shai taught on the Sabbath. It's a day of rest, but the prophets of Great Millstone teach on the Sabbath. I teach on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is, has come to an end as of now, for it's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The sun has already went down. It's a brand new day, but uh, it was my intention today to go in the street teach. What other way than, than, to, than to keep the commandments of Yahweh Shem Yahweh which Matthew 22, 9 says, What? Go ye therefore to the highways and hedges, and bid them in, compel them in to the marriage. 
bid them to the marriage between the bride and the lamb of the Most High, Yahweh Shai. What other better witness than to serve Yahweh Shai, Shai, to do the will of the commandments, to do the will of the Most High, God of Israel? What other better way? Okay? So, uh, so therefore, as, but as you can see there, the point of the scripture that I want to make was verse 16 says, And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahweh Shai, and therefore did the Jews persecute Yahweh Shai and sought to slay him. Because he had done these things. So as you can see right then and there. That his own people. Had, had come to slay him. Because they thought that he. Was doing some work. But look that, that's, that, that's really not work. Why? It is the Holy Spirit that worketh through us. That 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The gifts of the spirit. Which is healing. Um, let's get that right quick. That's not on our lesson. But I want to get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Tells us about the, about the gifts of the Spirit. And these gifts are, are in operation by the same Spirit. Okay, the use of spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of Yahweh called Yahweh Shah a curse, and that no man can say that Yahweh Shai is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Uh, and as you can see here, verse twelve, uh, chapter 12, verse 4, all the way on down, goes through all of the, the gifts. And as you can see here, um, you can catch up on this on your own time, but as you can see at verse 9, um, to another by the same Spirit. And all of these operations come through by way of the same Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash, the Spirit of Truth. To another, um, verse, okay, let's start at verse 8. For to one is given the Spirit, the Word of Wisdom, okay, to another the Word of Knowledge by the same Spirit, okay, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. All of these operations of the Holy Spirit Operate by the same Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of Yahweh by Shemuel Pursuant to 2 Timothy 3 16. Let's get it. 2 Timothy 3 16. Let's get it. Okay. Um, 2 Timothy 3 16. Let's get it. Um, all scripture is given by the inspiration of Yahweh, our power, and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of the Most High may be perfect. Salakia, that the, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Excellent. Now, um, let's get, uh, uh, right now, let's check our time. That's 33 minutes. I want to wrap this, this, uh, this thing up right quick. Now, the Bible tells us to pray for our enemies, okay? And our enemies are the two-thirds of the children of Israel. They are the ones who have not, so as of right now, Yahweh Shemim of Shai has not opened their minds up to the knowledge of this truth. Pursuant to Mark 4, 9, Matthew 13, 11. Okay, now, um, let's get it right quick. Um, let's, let's, let's go over that precept. We can find that precept in the book of Matthew, verse 5, verse, uh, Matthew, verse 5, 44. And it reads, But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. There's that word again. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and the good. And send it rain on the just and on the unjust. See that? Alright. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? You see what I'm saying? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even publicans so? So, you know, we ought to pray for our enemies. Okay, and... And after, after Yahweh Shem Yahweh by way of the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash brought to me in the Matthew 10, 23 scripture today, 
and, 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 and brought that to me this afternoon as I was dealing with that issue. Um, that was when I began to, uh, I, 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 I began to go into prayer, you know, because I know the Bible says to pray for your enemies, you know, because the Bible says that all Israel shall be saved and we are one nation. We are one nation. The two thirds are the two thirds. They still belong to the, the, the they still, the two thirds of Israel, two third part of Israel, Zechariah 13, that will be consumed in Paris in the second death. They still are part of the nation of Israel. And Romans eleven twenty six says, all Israel shall be saved. So they are our people, you know, they are our people. So, but right now they are, they have not turned to knowledge of the truth. They believe that what they believe is correct. And the Bible calls our people stiff neck. For Jeremiah four twenty two says, my people is foolish. They're like silly children. They're like silent children. Let's pull up our Romans eleven twenty six, and then we'll get that, and we'll get ready to close out this video. Um, Romans eleven twenty six, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. Where is it written at? Anytime you see the word "as it is written," that means it is it is a law concerning that. And we'll get the law in just a few seconds. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, which is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Let's read that first precept again. And so all Israel shall be saved, and it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That's right. And we all know that um, the name of our God in ancient Hebrew, his name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Yah means he is. Yah, Yah means he is. Hawa means he is. He is to be. He is to become. Yahweh Shai is the name, name of our Lord and Savior in ancient Hebrew, who the world refers to as Jesus. There is no J in the Hebrew language. That name does not exist in the Hebrew tongue. We know that the scripture is written in the Hebrew tongue. Uh, we have examples of that in Hebrew, in Acts 26, 14, and Acts 22, and 2 tells us that. And, you know, also we discovered the word, the name Bethesda. And the Bible had spoke, had referenced it as the word in, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, meaning five portions. So we definitely know that we are the children of Israel, which we are, he we are a Hebrew people serving a Hebrew God with a Hebrew name. Okay? And again, you, the, our Savior, our, our Lord and Savior's name is Yahweh Shah. Yah means he is. Yahweh Shah means he is our deliverer, our salvation. Okay, now, let's get that law right quick because I have not forgotten. That we can find that law in Isaiah 45, I believe, 17. Let's get it. But all Israel shall be saved in the Lord power with an everlasting salvation. He, Salakia, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so definitely, we definitely want to, we definitely have come to the knowledge of the truth that when we are first in one city, we are to flee into another. Why? Because according to that scripture, let's pull that scripture one more again, and we're going to close out. Matthew 10, 23. Okay. All right. Matthew 10, 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man become why? The children of Israel are scattered all over the place. Presumably, James 1 and 1, we are scattered abroad, we are scattered all over the world to include the confusion of faith. But if you look around, if you look around your neighborhood, if you look in every direction, all about 50, 60 miles, look how many areas of your town and your community, your metroplex, where uh, 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 the children of Israel reside. Okay, so now, um, I want to get one more precept, and then we're going to end the lesson. Um, let's go to, uh, uh, let's go to Luke 1149. I hope that's the precept I want to get. Um, and written down. Now, therefore also said the wisdom of the Most High, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, 
that the blood of all the prophets which were shed from the foundation of the earth may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Remember the Most High Yahweh Shem Shah requires that which is passed. Let's get that. That's in Revelation 1.15. Uh, 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 no, that's Ecclesiastes one. Yeah, Ecclesiastes one nine, Ecclesiastes three fifteen. Let's get it right quick. I bring it cramp because I know there's something else that I wanted to add into the lesson. So I end the lesson, and I don't want to make it too long. So I'm trying to ponder. I should have written it down. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, the thing that has been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there's no new thing under the sun. Okay, um, not the precept I'm looking for, but we're going to roll with it. Is there anything where it may be said, see, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. We can definitely apply that to our lesson that we're speaking of right now. Why? Because the prophets of old had suffered persecution as well. And they had fleed into another city. Okay, the, the main thing is, right now, Matthew 22, 9, we are going out in the world. We are looking for the elect. The Bible says to look for the elect. The elect are the contrite, broken spirits, the humble spirits, okay? The Bible also says look for those who are good and those who are bad and preach to them and, 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 and let them know to repent that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Show them their faults. We continue to read and, st continue to read and break down these scriptures. And also prophesy against my sins, Ezekiel 35 and 2. That is our job. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, what you don't want to do is <clears throat> be in a predicament where you feel that you have been persecuted in the city and you're just going to stop. Yeah, you can make videos, but we are to also uh, operate according to Matthew 22 and 9 and Luke uh, uh, 14, 21 and 23, which is going out to the highways and the hedges, going out to the footpaths and teaching the gospel, preaching the word. Okay, so if you stop, you're not even going to feel that duty. But if you go on to another city, you can definitely continue to look for the elect there in those spots. You see what I mean? So let's pull up the quiet that is just fast because, um, uh, Exactly where I thought where it was, but I, I know Ecclesiastes one nine is a precept pursuant to Ecclesiastes three fifteen. Um, let's go up here. Uh, Ecclesiastes three fourteen. I know that whatsoever the Most High doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, not, or nor anything taken from it. And the Most High doeth it that men shall fear before Him. That which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And the Most High required that which is past. So again, what what is happening in the days of old is happening right now. Ecclesiastes one nine says there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, Malachi three six says I'm the Lord thy God. I change not, so that the, so that ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Consumed mean uh, entry into the second death. Right, right. But uh, again, I hope this lesson has been edifying. If it has, it's come to you through the power and glory and honor of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and through the Spirit of Truth, the Kodesh, the Holy Spirit that is. I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shemir Shah by Shemir Kakadash, double honor to the elders of the Apostle Great Millstone. I say to his hope for elect again, Shalom.